OBB, Oriented Bounding Box, the next step of object detection that have been provided by Ultralytics. This new release has been like, I think two weeks already, and it's kind of like will be the new trend for 2024. So today we're going to create a custom oriented bounding box for object detection on bots. The minute I have seen this object detection on the aerial views of bots, I was like, honestly, it was insane. It was like something of out of like CIA movie, like Jason Bourne, if you know this movie and it was kind of cool so i kind of read a little bit about it i found there is multiple there is multiple new version of yolo v8.1 or point point one which is supporting the oriented bounding box so what is oriented bounding box and how it's work the best thing that i can describe it is it's a box inside a box uh, what's in the box speaking of new stuff i have created this template that can save you a lot of time using open ai abis it can it can talk with pdf and it can retrieve information from the pdf source it can do speech to text and translation and a lot of common talks that you can do using open ai for the common case that you will need when you're building an OpenAI application using Next.js and Express and a Mern stack. So if you want to buy it, link in description. We have this normal boxes that inside our object, which is a regular object detection that we all know or, or use. Is there instead of the stiff version, which making a smaller box inside this original box, which is the oriented. It gets oriented based on the width and height of the, the, the object inside the box itself. As you can see here, it's like the algorithm that they use to rotate based on the width and height. And there is a certain format like that it's follow for the data sets that we have to create. It goes the class index first, then x1, y1, x2, y2, until it's x4 and y4. This is the new format only for the version 8.1. This is a supported oriented bounding box dataset format. If we're gonna look at the label files for the dataset that we have, we should end it with something like this. Like the first thing is the index of the class, whatever classes that we have is in the X and the Y, the X and the Y, the X and the Y, and X and Y. And it's a very simple and straightforward. We can create something like this. It's not gonna take a while. We can create it in like 10 minutes. So without further ado, let's go. I got the data sets from RoboFlow. I'm gonna leave it in the link in the description, of course. It's a boat tracking model. When I was downloading our data sets, like following the format, I found this neat thing that have been been done before. It's called YOLO V5 Oriented Bound Box. Turned out that version five of YOLO already have a supporting for oriented bounding box, which is kind of weird. I thought the oriented bounding box is a new thing. Anyway, we download it in this YOLO V5 oriented bounding box, okay? But like I'm not gonna download it in terms of Zeb, I'm gonna download it in terms of code. So create your account, go in your data set, follow, uh, follow this what I told you. Basically, we're gonna use these two lines. We don't need the rest. I'm gonna show you how. Right now, let's take a look at our code. We're gonna need a GPU Google Colab that's running. We uh, have to check on it by using NVIDIA and tell us what type of GPU that we have on the memory use that we already have. Like we have 15 gigabyte of RAM, which is good. It's a T4, regular T4. I'm using the free version. Okay, then I set up the home as usual. I then I install both Ultralytics and Roboflow. When you install both Ultralytics and Roboflow, you're gonna get some sort of error. All you have to do is just go to the runtime and restart the session. That's it. Then run the one more time the environment. Then we're gonna import all the stuff that we're going to use. Supervision, RoboFlow, the Ultralytics, and the, the Bison for displaying the images. Then I want you to log in inside your RoboFlow account and leave it open. Then go back here and type RoboFlow.login, then invoke this RoboFlow a class that we imported here and it will basically because I already logged in uh, it's it was gonna tell you that like there is a there is gonna box it show up and this inside this box you have to click is then gonna open uh, another page that will give you this kind of authentication code and you copy it and put it inside the box and voila and you are and you are logged in with your RoboFlow account and you can download data sets that you need we have to make sure the dataset that we are using is with a high quality because 
if this uh, data set is bad, the oriented bounding box will not work correctly. I have tried it on multiple data sets before. I tried football, I tried aerial views for airports. Didn't work that well because the data set wasn't that cool. And I didn't have the time to sit down and create my own data set, honestly, this time. So I'm using the RoboFlow one. And I found this boat tracking model right here. It doing what it, it, it said, it's basically you can do it to track ships and boats and all those kind of stuff. It's not a big data set if you, if you look at it, it's just overview over here. It's just less than 400 image. It's very basic data set in terms of size, but like it's doing what it should be. Then I set the data set inside the data set variable here. Here I have two data sets, they are the same data. But I was just wanted to know that the boat tracking model one, it's the, the one that I downloaded, okay? So if you enter it, you will find this format inside every folder, you will find images and label text. And we don't want that. We don't want it to be label text. So I created this small function that we're gonna put the entire uh, bass inside for each folder, the test and validation and train. And it will tra it, uh, turn this folder name from global text to labels. That's it, you do just have to do nothing here. You just copy this, paste, or use it however you want. But then, the next part, or next step, we're gonna turn this format of labels. As you can see here, we don't want this format, the X and Y is all right, but we don't need the label name of the class, and the, the uh, class index is in a, in a wrong position. It should be the first thing and this should be deleted. And if it's a float, it should make it normal. This piece of code, I got it from another tutorial. It's very good, actually. I'm gonna leave the link of the description for it. Like, please watch his, his video also. It's a very cool video. And what it do, it take this label that we have here, format, and turn it to this format. As you can see here, it turned this for format from here to here. What it does is delete the shape, delete the class, and the, remove the class index from its end to the first thing to be here so it can follow the oriented bounding box format that we saw, like here. This is the first thing, the index, then the X and Y. And this is basically what it is doing here. Okay, so you don't have to worry about the format, but you have to worry about the quality of the dataset. We have to do this for each and every single folder we have. We have to do it one for training, one for test, and one for validation. And you don't forget that you copy this pass and bought the labels by the end, so it have to work. But before we, we but before you do that, we have to put the class name or the classes that we have inside the dataset. Where do you get it? Simply, like if you open the folder of the dataset that you downloaded, uh, you'll find a data.yml file, open it, copy this array, and put it here. Then hit running for each uh, folder that we have, one for training, one for validation, and one for testing. If it's done, we can right now train our own model. I'm using the CLI of Ultralytics, there is a lot of option, but we have to give it the task OBB, which is standing for the oriented bounding box, and what we're doing is training, and the model that I'm using is the medium. There is multiple version of the Ultralytics new models. There is the nano one, the small one, the medium, the large, and the X large one, which basically the bigger they are, the more time that will they, they will take, the better that we be, they will be if you basically use the X better than the nano. Back to our code. Then the data, we give it a path to our data ML, but before we hit run, you should make that the data ML for a file have the best, absolute best, of your current folder for the data set. For in my example here, the boat tracking model clean, it should be basically copy this pass, put it here, and that's it basically control S and it's saved. Then we bought whatever ebooks that you want. I just bought 50 here and the image size is same and batches is basically how many images that the model will see and I hit run. And it took me about like, I think it took me like 14 minutes, I think. I, I don't remember, honestly. But anyway, after I'm done, I hit the results so I can see the results of the training. 
and it took me a while so I can as you can see it's three and six it took me a while to get best data set that I can find and use in this kind of tutorial then I took it a little bit step further I'm gonna start to run this model on two things the images and in a video so I created a code that will basically all I have to do install by YouTube it's a very neat library that download YouTube video and extract title and thumbnail all the stuff is done by this small library when you run it you will see this box show up you put the links here and hit enter and it will download the uh, video for you okay I already downloaded a lot of videos so I don't need to run it again here I am doing a run on on the entire folder of images here I am not doing the video first but like I'm preparing for it I am what I'm doing here is basically tell the model that we created inside that train sex weight based of BT on a confident level of 14 uh, 40 and the source of the folder is the bunch of images inside the test folder and save it okay it it's saved on an predicted and i created this small code also using supervision here that will basically create a grid for us that will display all these images together because we can see it here like it, you can read it here it's just a simple grid i am using the SV blot images from supervision it's a wonderful library if you haven't checked it out i have a cool video you can see it a uh, link in description so you can see here it started to like basically doing the whole oriented as it much as it can as you can see in these images not that image but this one here is basically a perfect example of it's trying to detect uh the oriented bounding box for these images some of these images not detected because I am training it on a very small amount of images on 50 airbox it's not that a lot if it's 100 it will be better now for a video we want to run this model on a video so we can see it actually in live action we have here then the best for the video that we downloaded you can i'm gonna leave you a, a few couple of links that you can download if you're following along or i'm gonna leave it here on the google collab and the output name which kind of didn't work for me but doesn't matter because YOLO basically bought this model we bought the result inside the prediction folder then I hit run here I give it the, the model that we want to use and I hit run and predict model the best and the input do it saying let's see the video in action results here as you can see speed it up as you can see here it is detecting the shapes the closer or bigger it get it's not the best thing but it's working as it in intended and it's actually doing its best to be oriented around the box or the shape that it detect here it's in the racing one it detecting one object in a very good confident level and it's trying to orient itself as you can see here is a perfect example of it's trying to basically do its orientation uh, as much as it can and that's it that's we we are did that's it we have created a custom model for oriented bounding box object detection on a custom data set you can use it of course with webcam uh, or you can format it on a different thing because i have got these questions before there is the ability right now that the export the format in this table you can export it to by torch torch script onyx open venue tensor art there is a lot here and i think that is very cool also i think there is you can you can uh, you can use the cli that's here uh, in terms of the basically the code like here yolo export the model that we have is in the format that we want to very straightforward and if you want to read about data set format you can get come come here and read this and how to use it finally thank you for watching hope that you enjoyed and learned something new in this video and there is other videos here you can watch you might like this one or you might like this one anyway ciao for now